In this video, we're diving deep into nodes in the DaVinci Resolve color page. Now, if like me, you've come to Resolve from a layer-based NLE like Premiere Pro, Final Cut, or Avid, the node tree might look a little bit confusing. But I promise, if you stick with me, you'll not only understand them, but you'll also appreciate the incredible flexibility and control that they offer. So what are nodes really? Think of a node as an instruction you're giving the software. And the node tree is like a flowchart that shows the order you want these instructions to be applied. There are a few different types of nodes, and they'll apply your instructions in different ways. This will all make more sense if I just show you. This is the simplest node tree you can have. This little green dot is the source input, and it represents the original, ungraded image as it's piped into the color page from your edit. The image then flows into the green input of a serial node, and this is where we tell Resolve to do something to the image. In this case, we'll add some contrast. We'll come back to these blue inputs and outputs a little bit later. Then we go from the green output of that node to this second green dot, and that represents the final output that gets passed back to the timeline. Now we can make several adjustments on one node. It's good practice to split things up into separate nodes. It's easier to see the effect and adjustment it's having, and you'll have more control over the order the adjustments are applied. If on this node there's contrast, I also add some saturation and maybe make it a little bit warmer. I can turn off the node by hitting Command and D, but I can't easily turn on and off just the contrast or just the saturation. I'd have to undo and redo each instruction, which is really annoying. Instead, let's reset by right-clicking the node and selecting Reset Node Grade. Now we'll add two more nodes. You can either right-click on your first node and select Add Node, Add Serial, or just use the shortcut Option and S. On the first one, I'll add some contrast. On the second, I'll add some saturation. On the third, I'll make the image a little warmer. I'm also going to label my nodes so I remember what each of them is doing. You can right click and select node label, or you can add that command as a keyboard shortcut. I strongly suggest you label your nodes because it's not super obvious what a node is doing just by looking at it. Open up your keyboard customization panel, then in the search box, start typing label, and then drill down to the instruction label selected node. Then under the keystroke column, click until it turns red, type in your keystroke, and then save. I already have it assigned to the tab key on my keyboard. We'll label these contrast, saturation, and warm. Now I can select these individual nodes and press Command and D to turn them on and off to get an idea of what effect each of these nodes is having on my image. Let's reset this whole grade by right-clicking in an empty space and selecting Reset All Grades and Nodes. Now I want to show you why the order of your nodes is important. Let's take this node and remove all the color by turning the saturation down to zero. Remember to label your node. Now I'll add a second node by hitting Option and S. We'll label it green and using the offset control, we'll make the whole shot green. So our order of operations is remove saturation, then make it green. Now I want you to hover over the right side of each of these links so they turn blue and click on them so the connection is broken. Then we're gonna swap these nodes around and reconnect them. So we go into the green node first and then the desaturation node, then the output. Because the desaturation instruction comes after the green color cast, the image we now see has no color. Okay, while serial nodes are the most common ones you'll use, now we're gonna cover a few other ones that are available. With parallel nodes, your video signal is split and fed to two or more nodes simultaneously, so they all receive the same input. When you've made your changes, their outputs are then sent to a dedicated node called a parallel mixer. This mixer node takes the processed images from all the parallel branches and blends them together. This is helpful when you wanna make adjustments on several nodes without them being influenced by each other's processing. Let's undo a few steps so we're back to the image having a green color cast. I'm going to add a window to this node so it only affects part of the shot. Now with that node selected, you can either right click and select Add Node, Add Parallel, or use the shortcut Option and P. You'll see it's added these two new nodes, as well as a parallel mixer node that will combine the outputs together. I'll label the second node red and make it red and put a window on it. And this one blue, and I'll make that blue with a window on it. If I make a change to one, it doesn't affect the signal that's being sent to the others, so those colors don't change. If I overlap these windows, you can see that it blends the output of all three together. It doesn't matter what order these nodes are connected to the mixer, they all just get blended together. I'll disconnect them and swap the order, and our image looks the same. This is important because the next option we're gonna talk about is layer nodes. At first glance, they'll look the same, but instead of blending nodes together, as the name suggests, it layers them one on top of another. Let's reset our grade, and this time, right click on the node and select Add Node, Add Layer, or press Option and L on your keyboard. This looks like the previous example. You have a signal being sent to multiple nodes, and a mixer combining them back together. 
Let's select the top one, label it saturation, and turn down the saturation. And nothing happens. That's because the second layer is stacked on top of the first. And I know this makes no sense. You would think the layer on top would, you know, be on top. But in the mixer, the lowest input is stacked on the top, and I don't know why. And yes, it's very, very silly, but that's just the way it works. On this second node, label it window and add a window to it. Instantly, you can see the desaturated node coming through anywhere the window isn't affecting. That's because it's stacked on top and only the part with the window is visible, so the layer beneath can be seen. Let's remove the window and add a key instead, so we select only the blue parts of the image. Same thing, the blue parts are cut out and the desaturated image is revealed everywhere else. If I disconnect these nodes from the mixer and then I swap them around, the order they're connected does make a difference. Now the whole image is black and white because it's the topmost layer. Okay, let's talk about outside nodes. It does exactly what the name suggests. It allows you to make adjustments to everything outside of the area you isolated in a previous node. Let's say you want to brighten up these faces a little. Let's add a window to the image, resize it and place it over the first face. And then another by hitting this plus circle button. And then we'll add some brightness using the gamma control. Now add an outside node by right clicking and selecting add node, add outside, or hitting option and O. If you look closely, you'll see that as well as adding the node, there's a dashed line between the blue output and the blue input. While the green ones carry RGB values of the image, the blue one carries the alpha or transparency information. Because we added windows to this first node, it's using those same windows and passing the information along. But because it's an outside node, it's inverting the alpha signal. So it's going to affect what's outside the windows. In the thumbnails, you can see the difference. When I darken this outside node, it's ignoring the faces and darkening the rest of the shot. This also means if I change the shape or position of the original windows, it automatically changes in the outside node to reflect this new shape. And by now, you should have a good grasp of all of the most common nodes you'll come across on the color page. If you have any questions, be sure to drop them in the comments below. There are a few other less common nodes, but we'll cover those in another video. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.